Welcome to our spoiler review of Fever Dream by George R. R. Martin. I don't know how I found this book. I just kind of found it and it ended up on my bookshelf somehow. <laughs> You're probably like browsing through his yeah. catalog. Yeah. Maybe it was from BMV. I don't know. There's, I have another one that's like, has like the Eye of Sauron on the front cover by George R. R. Martin and there's like Nazgul reference. I don't know, George R. R. Martin has a big career. And anyways, this book was like interesting in ways that you don't expect. All right, so the plot of the book is really pretty basic. There's a guy named Abner and he has a steamboat and he's doing badly so he needs like a partner and up comes this mysterious obvious vampire named Joshua <laughs> York. That. Like, so this guy basically shows up and he's eating like a very raw like cut of meat and I'm just like oh and he's pale and he's beautiful and, and I'm he's like, insisted on meeting at midnight and he's like oh surprise vampire after has had some bad luck with his steamboating company all his almost all of his boats have been destroyed and so Joshua York makes him an offer that he cannot refuse. He offers to build him like the biggest, beautiful, fastest boat on the river. Abner's dream is to like overtake the boat, the Eclipse, which has been like the darling of the river yeah. for so many years now. And he's like, okay, we'll do it. Joshua York is like, okay. But uh, I'm also captain. You're gonna have to follow all my requests and you cannot ask any questions. And Abner's just like, that's kind of suspicious, but like, but let's think about this. How weird could your requests be? Now Abner is not a pretty man. He's not like a, a he brilliant man. He kind of looks a little bit like George R. R. Martin. But with like warts on his face. Yeah. He's so endearing. <laughs> yeah, he really is. He's not a brilliant man, but he's smart. He's not quick, but he he's, does get there. He's very methodical. He figures things out. He's very good at what he does. He takes his time, but he gets there. <laughs> and he's also loyal as fuck. <laughs> and I love him. I just, I loved... I loved him so much and so I'd be reading this book and I'd be like, oh Abner, no. Not your boat, Abner. <laughs> the fever dream is like the one thing he cares about. He was just like, this is the best thing. This is what I give to the world. It, it's basically, imagine you made the thing. It's the thing you love. It's the thing that you cherish. And then somebody shows up and they take it away from you. <laughs> even though you've put seven years of work into it. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, YouTube. But this beautiful boat, he names it the Fever Dream. Joshua York is just kind of like, okay, I don't know how I feel about the name, but okay, if you want it. They go, they launch this boat, things are going great, it's fast, you know, he knows it can beat the eclipse. And Joshua makes a couple of odd stops down the river, and he, one time he comes back, like, covered in blood, and Abner's like, shit, do, am I, like, harboring a criminal? Like, or maybe he just fought some wolves or some bandits in the woods because those exist, but like... What? What What the hell is going on? And so eventually he confronts Joshua about what's going on and Joshua's like, Oh, well you're not gonna believe it, but there's some <laughs> vampires out there. And I'm hunting them. Yeah. I'm a vampire I'm hunter. I'm stopping their evil. And you know, they don't show up in mirrors and you know, holy water gets them Why do you think this entire boat is covered in silver? And I'm reading it and I'm just like, this is just too perfect. Yeah, you're up to something, Joshua. <laughs> you obvious vampire, you. So we find out that in fact, Joshua is a vampire. And what he's doing is he has created this kind of like wine concoction that he can live on. And so he doesn't have to eat people. He is a vampire vegetarian, one could say. Vampires in this world are a little bit different, which I like. Mm -hmm. I liked that they were like a different kind of species, that it, that it wasn't like, oh, you can become a vampire. Vampires are born, they're not made. Their thirst kind of reminded me almost of like werewolves or like time of the month where like it comes upon you <laughs> and you have to Consume. You go crazy. Ah. And so yeah, so every month or so like they have to go out and they have to just like eat something and it's like their will to live. It just like takes over and it doesn't matter what they want. They have to go out and eat somebody. And Joshua was tormented by it for years because he kind of grew up with humans. He didn't know what he was. And then so when it finally came upon him, he was just like disgusted with himself. And like after years of trying to like kill himself, he finally came up with a way to not have to eat humans. And he's like, this is great for us, you know what? Like, because there aren't a lot of us, there are like probably like 20 on the whole entire earth, and we don't 
mate too often because we only mate when our females go into heat. And the females die. Like, birth is pretty traumatic, so (laughs) their survival rate is quite low. If we're not eating humans, then, you know, we can get human doctors in to, like, you know, help us birth our, our kids and, you know, maybe the females won't die. So, you know, this is a good thing. So the great thing is the whole, like, racism slavery allegory that's kind of like going around because you have like the vampires who are like yes yes all human or cattle and then you have the uh white people being like slaves aren't people <laughs> yeah, and you're just like oh God. i'm just like i see what you're doing martin you could like, could have could <sighs> this could have been so good but you just you just missed the mark you're so close yeah it's just it was almost like too obvious. Yeah. It was like you're, he was almost hitting you over the head with it in a way. So that's kind of what was a bit of a problem. Also, there aren't really any black characters or really any female characters. Yeah. So it's very like a narrow perspective on things. And the whole of the female characters, kind that kind of bugged me, except for one scene when it was just fucking hysterical. <laughs> what was that scene? Okay. So there's a villain, Damon Julian. We'll get into his details later on. But he resides around like the New Orleans area. Our boy Joshua York wants to go confront him and be like, hey, you guys should like join my steamboat and like, we don't need to eat people anymore because I got this magical elixir juice and we can all be happy and it'll be great. One of the vampires, the lady vampire, is like, Joshua, you you shouldn't do this. Like, don't go to him. Don't go to him. He's gonna like wreck you. He's so much more powerful than you are. He's a monster. He's not gonna listen to you. He he loves being cruel. Like, he doesn't want to give up eating people. It's Joshua's just like, no, good triumphs over evil. I am, like, the savior of our people. I'm so cool. I'm Joshua York. <laughs> so Joshua York is basically the YA protagonist in a story that hates YA protagonists because He's created this way that all these people can live together and thrive in this concoction so vampires will no longer be tied to their thirst. And there's kind of this myth, which is kind of really cool because there's this whole idea that vampires don't really create anything, but they're kind of starting to like, they dream about maybe, oh, there's this city where we could all like live as a people, like the vampires, and it's our city. We're not like living off of the humans and we're gonna be brought there by this pale king. And Joshua York's like, hey, I think I'm the pale king. I'm pretty pale. I'm pretty pale. I'm kind of a savior, guys. And all the other vampires are like, yeah, you know what? You are kind of cool. You're totally the pale king. He's like, yeah, I know this story. I'm going to go up against like ultimate evil. I'm going to defeat the ultimate evil. And then guess what, guys? We're going to be free. Yay. And so he follows the hero's journey right up to the climactic battle. <laughs> where he gets smacked where down. Where he gets smacked down. And he proceeds to be smacked down for like two decades and you're just like oh honey and so this vampire chick who i am blanking on her name right now valerie yes so valerie's like okay i can't convince the vampire captain i'm gonna go talk to abner and so she tries to seduce abner and everyone in this sequence is confused (laughs) because she's not into it he's not into it but you know he kind of wants to be into it he's like yeah she's like literally the prettiest woman i've ever seen and i think i want her but i haven't think I've ever wanted anyone before and emotions are weird and like I have all these weird thoughts about women being somewhat evil and the only woman in my life is my boat and so he's <laughs> awkward about it and she's really she's in love with Joshua and so she's like I guess I'll do this I mean like if it saves Joshua and Joshua York is watching this entire thing just like the fuck is going on here <laughs> and it's just it's in any other situation, in any other book, this scene would have upset me. Because it's just like, oh look, the woman can only convince the man with using her sexuality, because that's what women are for. But because it's so awkward, <laughs> I kind of like, loved it. <laughs> They're like, well, I feel like, I feel obligated to try this. <laughs> no, it doesn't work. So anyways, York goes down the river, he meets Damon Julian, and everything goes to shit. Because Damon Julian is fucking way too much for him. (laughs) He's way too much in a way that you don't expect though, which is really fun. Basically, he's lived his entire life, like eons and eons, long, long time, and he's just, he's tired of living. He can't admit it to himself and his like, 
thirst or his like will to live won't let him die. Yeah, he's kind of like split into two personalities. There's like the Damon Julian personality, which is like comes out every once in a while, specifically when they have prey almost, where he's just like, he toys with them. And then there's the thirst Damon Julian, who just like, I must consume. Yeah. And like really Damon Julian is just like uninterested in life. And like when he doesn't have something to eat, he basically just stares at the he, walls. He kind of thrives on conflict. So on like one hand, he like when Joshua York starts to like come around, he's just like, ooh, a thing. I can, I can, a thing guys. <laughs> as soon as he's out of the picture, he just goes back into his kind of catatonic state. And I absolutely loved it because he's like, it's not really a villain you're used to. And like, there's really no way to win. Yeah. Except by like, killing him outright. Which takes Joshua York a fucking long time to get around to. York is like, let's go talk to Damon Julian. And the crew's like, we don't want to go there. <laughs> it's bad there. <laughs> it's not good. We're not going there. And so Damon Julian actually just kind of shows up. He's like, ooh, a conflict. I must insert myself into this. And so they have this awkward meal on the boat. Abner is the only human present. And it goes south bad because... What we find out later is by drinking the concoction, he's kind of stunting his inner monster. So when he has to do like the alpha like stare down, he's weakened. He can't do it. He can't do it. So Damon Julian just kind of wins. And Joshua York has a moment where he's like, Abner, run. <laughs> and Abner's like, I have no idea what's happening. So Damon Julian also has this really creepy sidekick named Sarah Billy. Aptly named. Yeah. 100%. And he's like your like average like slimy greasy like henchman. wants to be somebody henchman. And he's motivated by the fact that he feels like everybody's looking down on him and he wants to feel like a big man but he also wants to be a vampire because he thinks that vampires are made not born. And Tame and Julian just kind of like lets him like live that dream. Like he says whatever he has to to manipulate this guy into doing what he wants. So he just becomes like a complete monster by the end of the book who like refuses to die. Over the years he becomes like a cannibal and he just starts like eating blood because he thinks it's making him stronger and that he can see better in the dark now and he's almost there. He's the creepiest character in the book. He's definitely the creepiest <laughs> character in the book. At about the, the two thirds of the waypoint is when this meal goes down and then Abner returns to find that our poor boy Joshua is now sworn to Damon Julian because of the whole like blood ritual thing and they leave and Joshua was like no we have to leave before Abner gets here because he can't like <laughs> we're all going to die yeah. because um, the vampires have locked all of them the passengers into their compartments being like, oh look, we have snacks for the road, yay. <laughs> and so Abner talks to some of his people being like, okay, we gotta get rid of Damon Julian, we gotta kill him, and we gotta do this during the day when they're, they're not awake. It goes to shit. Yeah, very it, quickly. Very quickly. It leads to Abner jumping off the boat. <laughs> Yeah. And this is when the timeline starts to get really stretched out. So like they attempt to kill him, they end up killing one of the vampires that they kind of like instead because Damon and Julian made them switch rooms. And so then Abner has to flee and then Abner has to find his boat and then Abner finds his boat under a different name because Sour Billy is actually kind of smart and Sour Billy is the only one who's taking care of the vampires because at this point Damon Julian doesn't care anymore because he's on a boat, he has people to eat and like his fight or flight instincts have like Quiet it, quiet it down. And so thus begins the long story of Abner trying to find his boat. Abner finds the boat. He tries to take the boat. He fails to take the boat. The boat. <laughs> <laughs> when he tries to take the boat, that's when he leaves with the cook, Joshua, and Valerie. And Valerie dies. Yeah, and Joshua gets like burned in the sun and he's like, I have to go back because I can't leave my people. They're all I've got. And I can save the man. And Abner is like, why don't you just kill them and New York's just like, I can save them. Still the YA protagonist. <laughs> yeah, to the end, to the very end. New York goes back, he presumably finds the boat and it disappears and Abner doesn't hear about it for like another like 10 or 15 years. <laughs> so you have this kind of like montage of Abner just like being a steamboat captain, like watching the boats get more effective, and then the boats kind of start dying out because the railroad starts to happen, and he joins the Underground Railway, and 
Like the Civil War happens. And he does all this stuff and then eventually he retires and it's so cute because he like moves into this house in his like Hometown. Hometown, and he gets a housekeeper who he just banters with, and he's uh, like, he's like, he kind of <laughs> likes it because it's the only thing that keeps him sharp. And he like has like models of all his boats in in the day. And then he gets a letter one day, and it's from Joshua, and it's like, I need you to come here. And Abner's like, I've been waiting for this chance my entire life. Let's go. <laughs> and so he goes, and he meets him in kind of this like red light district. And Joshua was like, yeah, I'm hiding here because you couldn't find me. By the way, the reason you couldn't buy the, find the boat is because we actually brought it into his, like, con like his plantation, and it kind of, it's hung out there, and then, you know, um, for some reason he kind of wants to race it, man. He wants to race the boat. He's going to, like, capture the, the new fast boats on the river, and then he's going to make a... A repeat thing of the fever dream where it just disappears. And, and he's gonna kill everyone, so everyone's gonna be like, when they think of the fever dream man, you're like, they're gonna think a demon boat. And he's just like, no, not the reputation, it's my boat, I love my boat, we have to stop him. And so they ride off in the night to go and stop him, and they get there, and the boat is just like in total disrepair, and Abner just kind of looks at him, and he's like, you can't fucking sail this. What did you do to my boat? <laughs> Why did you lie to me? Like, you know you can't sail this. And he's just like, I didn't think you'd come for anything else. And he's like, dude, you're kind of my best friend. <laughs> really? We're doing the lion thing again? Like, fuck off, dude. I would have come anyway. And so then they have to fight Damon Julian for the last battle. It all looks lost because Joshua fails again. And Abner has this realization because he's smart. It just takes him a while to get there. And he's just like, oh. You know, the reason that he was able to beat him the one time was because the thirst was crazy. So, like... If I just shoot him, <laughs> if I make him like mad enough, man, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> this could work. And in the meantime, they've like finally disposed of Sour Billy, who's just become like an old decrepit monster, and he's like, like thrown off the edge of a boat. Yet he's still alive. alive, and he like he can't move his legs or anything. He literally like takes his knife, stabs him to the, and drags himself <laughs> up. It's like, can I be a vampire now, David Julian? <laughs> And he like provides the perfect distraction, so Abner shoots Joshua, and Joshua's like, shit, I need blood, and then he like stares down Damon Doolin and beats him. Dun dun dun. And then they kill him. Yay. And then the epilogue is Abner is dead, and he's buried, and the visitor always visits his tombstone at night, and it's all sweet because they're BFFs for life. Hashtag Biffles. And there's like a little image on his tombstone of the fever dream a boat nobody has ever heard of beating the eclipse once a famous riverboat. And people are like, what the fuck? And okay, so the one thing that drove me mental about this entire book is you never fucking get the race. And I mean, this is 437 pages of Abner just being like, I'm gonna beat this boat. I'm gonna beat this boat. I'm gonna beat this boat. Never fucking happens. <laughs> and then, like, at the end, when he's j when Joshua shows up, it's like he wants to race the boat. You can kind of feel the glimmer. It's like, it may not be the eclipse, but it's still the best boat on the river. <laughs> so all in all, it was a good book. I liked it. I mean, like, yeah. Are, if you, It's not like you're going to be your favorite book, probably, but you do learn a lot about steamboats. Yes, you do. And I enjoyed it. I enjoyed a lot of things about it. So it was, yeah, worth a read. If you liked our review, guys, subscribe and... We will see you next time for the rest of Vampire Month. Bye, guys.